Okay, the shit just got real. IoT Coffee Talk is on Clubhouse, folks. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. going to go in and add some friends. I'm going oh, to I'm gonna hit that plus sign and bring some people into our room. And let's see if anybody cares. <laughs> you know, I found out that you're lucky if you get anybody in your room unless you have a, a club. But you can't get a club until you've hosted several. Let's see if we can get Ocean in here. Let's see if I get Osa in here. Let's uh, see. Um, are you sure you want to get any of your colleagues on here? Because they might, they might run away. Yeah, I'll probably get fired. They might get. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably get... right. No, we got to do what we got to do, right? We just got to do it. All right, we're yeah. so we're rocking here. Rock and roll, baby. That's what we're about. Rock and roll, IoT, and drugs or sex no, or no, we, we didn't admit those. Say that. Those are, we didn't those say are not. That. Yeah, we didn't say that. This is okay. not your Uncle Billy here for your BBC Christmas number one telling you, "Hey, kids, be a rock star, and you'll get them for free." <laughs> no, we would never do that. It's not about that. So, welcome to IoT Coffee Talk. I've got my coffee, and Wanky's got the talk. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Nice. Finally. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. So you had a big event last week. It was we all week. A... Woo. Yeah. 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 It was. Um, um, yeah. We had the Things Conference event, uh, all focused on uh, on what we do with Laura Wen, and uh, we had a lot of people, around four thousand people from all over the world. We usually do it on a physical. Um, uh, of course, physical in Amsterdam last uh, two days of January, uh, the Thursday and Friday. Um, and uh, we, we got lucky because we had the conference in 2021. Actually, we had a conference with 1,500 people uh, from 62 countries in 2020. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I can, like, that's what you, that's what you, can you tell your grandkids, you know? Yeah, but hey, <laughs> hey let, 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 let's back up for a moment, though. Vinky, That's introduce right. yourself. First off, this, you're like our first guest. We usually don't okay. do guests, right? And we might change our format going forward because- We've been be afraid good. to do guests because they we figure they might find out that we're all faking it and we're just making shit okay. up. Yeah. yeah. I'll just play along, I'll play along. Yeah, and then, <laughs> um, yeah. And just to, to introduce ourselves to the whole, uh, well, actually this is our first uh, time on Clubhouse, right? doing the show on clubhouse yeah and there's and, thousands uh, of people on our little yeah. room oh yeah it's just <laughs> completely ludicrous man it's just it's getting silly I, I i don't know what to do can't handle it <laughs> yeah so go ahead and introduce yourself winky yeah yeah so uh i'm a ceo and co-founder of uh, the things network and what we do is we help uh, uh companies and uh, makers and uh uh, smart cities build uh, uh, Internet of Things networks using LoRaWAN and using the yeah, the low power uh, capabilities of these networks. And examples are that we uh, the part the smart parking place, smart mousetrap, a uh, smart uh, water sensor to uh, prevent the flood. Uh, we build networks on ships, on railway stations, and um, um, how we we distinguish ourselves a bit in, in maybe a bit of an atypical approach is that we um, think the developer is the is the most important actor in this in this play uh, of IoT yeah. because it's, uh, it's 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 extremely hard actually to make it and uh, the the scope of competence is so wide that uh, we need to have tools that uh, mm. that uh, that make it easier and that's that's a bit of the core of our our core hypothesis and uh, and that's a lot of things, things result from that, but that's our, uh, that's where it starts, where we feel. Yeah, yeah and, and Vinky, before we got on, I was mentioning to you how uh, 
actually really well done the the event was and i'm not just like blowing smoke up your ass it, it was really good and uh, you know some of the things that uh, i thought uh, could be best practices for a lot of other organizations putting on virtual events is the, the short formats this 10 minute thing that you guys had the limit and oh hey we have mark coming on cool hey, the mark. spaniard he has an Android phone, so he can't really join us on Clubhouse, but ah, yeah, okay. this is cool. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, how How's are you? Going? Hey, hey. hey. You, you missed our 70s tribute to you, dude. We did Black Dog, Led Zeppelin. I can't oh, hear him. You're missing out. <laughs> You're going to have to translate. Uh, and I'm a really horrible lip reader. You know, so, uh, yeah, going back to what I was saying earlier, I mean, it, these short format presentations, these keynotes were awesome. And, you know, have, you know having uh, presented two of them during the conference, it really put me a pressure on me to make the presentations dense uh, but concise, you know, and um, I think that's great. Then you don't get these people up on stage, like, wasting a bunch of your time just Mum, you know, mumbling about yeah. stuff and rambling on. So uh, that plus all the little <laughs> cool virtual whatever. Uh, what, what what was that thing where you're like you had like yeah. a TV head? You're uh, like that virtual Wally. world for mixing and uh, socializing. Yeah. So so uh, yeah. So first of all, I like all the credits, of course, to the team. Uh, so we have uh, our community managers and conference uh, managers. That it's there's goes a lot of time uh, in it. And um, so, yeah, thanks a lot for the compliments and I'll pass them on to them because it's, it's really their, uh, their, their effort. And um, uh, I think w when we started in 2018, we had quite, we defined a few principles when we said like, if we're going to do a conference, we're going to do uh, it like, like uh, we're going to follow some rules. And what we said is that um, already is that we don't want talks where people introduce themselves because you're already being presented by the moderator so like you can skip three slides and you don't have to talk about your company because i can go to your website and uh we, we gave that a bit of a strict framework already from 2008 and actually when we went to a virtual event we thought okay we need need to even be more stricter because um the times like the attention span is so short uh -huh. and uh yeah and also like people are parallel doing it in parallel right so they're working and they're watching and so then you have to be very respectful of the of the of the visitor's time um while if you're at a conference it's a whole experience and yeah. um yeah it's so that's um but i think i think definitely we'll take the 10 minute format uh, back to the physical event because it only leaves more time for networking and it's only like a social awkwardness that a lot of times you go and start like keep listening to somebody that maybe it's not telling something very interesting for half an hour or you, you get your phone or something. But yeah, um, yeah so um, yeah. And we had this, these, these gadgets like this VR world where you can do networking. Um, maybe yeah, you've seen it on LinkedIn where I posted a few of these screencasts. And um, um, yeah, what we did we more, we, we, we also used a quite a, a, a advanced studio for recording. So there was uh -huh. extended reality uh, studio. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was so, really cool. Uh, yeah, that's that's super cool. So um, and that was uh, it's like uh, we made a making off. You can watch it, but it's it's it, it just creates a yeah. it creates a, a bit of um, a feeling that 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 we actually did like go quite far in making sure we we deliver experience and it was received very well i think the, yeah, yeah. the score was 8.8 8 .8 out of uh yeah out of 10 ridiculous and then yeah. that was a, a sample of 10 percent of our of our visitors yeah, building because the, a lot of yeah. these a lot of these virtual events can become very overwhelming there's just so much content and it's rambling content. So I, I, you know, and so I know we want to get to Laurel Ann and we want to share our takeaways from the event, but more importantly, just maybe even talk about uh, the technology. But I, I think you guys uh, put on a great case study 
an example of yeah. how virtual events should be done. And, and again, I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. It, it, it if people, no, you were part of it, event. like all three of you had, uh, had, okay. had yeah. so thank you as well. Right. It's, it's yeah. I mean, our mantra, I all three much, of us, right. We're key. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So our mantra is uh, let's build this thing together. So it's yeah. like, it's, it's really a community effort. And, yeah. um, um, yeah, it's so, um, so yeah. Yeah. So, hey, um, so let's talk about the state of the nation here with Laura and Laura Wan. Um, Can you uh, tell people what the difference between Laura and Laura Wan is? Yeah. And why it enables the the smart mousetrap. How is it a critical element to that? Because I think everybody is dying to know. Right? <laughs> Yeah. That is... No, for that's uh, yeah. So I think um, uh, to keep it, to keep it very short, um, uh, the the main let's say business case driver of uh, of of the technology, Laura and Laura Wan, is that it's low power and it lowers the maintenance cost of IoT networks, and therefore it just pulls a lot of IoT business cases into a positive business case. So that's maybe a bit of an abstract uh, situation, but. Um, uh, if you look at a smart mousetrap, you have to send people to check the mousetrap. Uh, and if you uh, let the mousetrap know if the mouse is caught, then all of a sudden you only have to send some, somebody to empty it uh, when the mouse is caught. So this is a very simple bottom line OPEX re reduction uh, uh, use, ca uh, use case. So that's a bit of the use cases that are also starting to mature after five years. Uh -huh. um, and um, yeah, and then then going into the to to Rob's question on on what's the difference between Laura and Laura when so Laura is the uh, specific RF uh, protocol, so it's a way um, that it it puts um, uh, um, uh, a radio signal uh, on the air in a way that it can travel very long uh, through using a, 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 a so-called chirp method. Uh, not going into deep uh, in that. And LoRaWAN is like the routing uh, protocol, and it allows multiple uh, antennas to act as one network, but also multiple networks to act as one network. And if you look at that, the internet LoRaWAN is like the IP uh, internet protocol, and uh, and 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 the, and the physical layer is then uh, the, the the air and these transceivers. So that's yeah, that's a okay. bit in a nutshell. Because I've got good friends that I've worked with at Microsoft and Hitachi when we built Lumata, so both Alistair Fulton and Steve Engendorfer, and I know they're down and hanging out at Simtech, who makes all this technology yeah. uh, that brings all this stuff to life. And so I'm always, you know, I ping on them, you know, every few months to see how things are going. Um, what kind of traction do you feel like Laura, Laura Wand is getting around the world? So is it making um, good progress? We saw those little yeah. rocket ships, so it must be pretty significant in your charts. <laughs> you know, whenever you put like those little rocket ships on your growth charts, man, it means it's like yeah. astronomical, bro. You see this big line, indeed. Like it's almost uh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should um uh, no no so so what you see is that um um uh, there are a few use cases that uh are really exploding. Uh, most of them are in compliancy, food compliancy, and they all have a business case that just save you 0 0.2 FTE or a like maybe a half an FTE. And and I think that we've we've come to a point that uh, over a five year period we can reduce total cost of ownership of a single application to to let's let's say five year period of a total cost of ownership to around between two and three thousand dollars. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you compare the uh, three thousand dollar over five year long uh, zero point two FTE, then and all of a sudden it starts to work. And what you see there is that, uh, um, uh, oh, the, um, you, man. yeah, it's, I'm being this is struggle apps. is real. Yeah, this is <laughs> apps being taken over. So, um, so the. Um, 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 uh, so, so what you see, a few of these uh, like verticals are, are really taking off. Uh, and I think what we try to show off a bit, yes, with the rockets and uh, uh, but the, these are all real numbers is that what we've shown is that uh, the uh, adoption is very widespread uh, horizontally across a lot of different in, in different industries. So it's it's um, um, uh, it's finding adoption geographically very uh, 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 distributed, but also over industries. 
Uh, and what we now have is uh, around 800,000 devices registered on the networks that we operate, um, 30,000 uh, gateways, so these are the antennas, and they are sending 600 messages per second. And specifically, because the the if you look at metrics and you see you have the concept of leading metrics, which then, uh, and you have the concept of lagging metrics. Um, so a message being sent over the air in a constant basis, that is when everything falls uh, falls in the right place. So that a lot of hard work has been done when the data starts flowing. That's a lot of like, like a lot of POCs failed, a lot of like every, like a lot of uh, pain and, 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 and IoT drama has, has, uh, has gone before that. So that's really good to see that we see the data flowing um, and it's finding its way in a lot of different niches. Uh, yeah, specifically where sites are operated. So for instance, to, uh, together with the Deutsche uh, Telekom, we announced a, a collaboration where LTM yeah. Uh, is used as the backhole for uh, because LTM is very strong in deep indoor inter in penetration as a backhole, and then Laura does the last mile, and that yeah, that's a like if I look at uh, has been really received cool. uh, yeah massive amount of commercial interest in in that. Um, so what you see is that Laura is strong in that last mile for low yeah. power devices, yeah, in concentrated installations, yeah. uh, and uh, yeah, that's where it's finding its uh, its success. So do you put LTEM on the gateway or how does yeah. that work? Okay. Yeah, so wow. LTEM is a, is a gateway. It's enough bandwidth to, do, to, to deliver it. So low, uh, uh, the latency is, is low enough. And um, um, yeah, and it comes at, a, at, a, at, a, in, at an interesting price point. And um, um, yeah, it is, it's interesting to see where this, this is converging. Uh-oh, um, I lost you again, yeah. bro. Oh. No, I still hear him. Okay. We're good. Yeah, me too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's just me. You just lost yourself, That's Leonard. Really cool. Uh, I just yeah. stopped talking. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that what's, happens to me all the time. So what is what is the pitch uh, for for Laura Laura Wan versus other technologies when you're talking to someone or you know a developer or a company that needs to do connectivity? There's a lot of options out there. What yeah. what is your what is your pitch to go the way you have gone over the last several years versus other options? Um, so the the pitch is a is a wide range of uh, uh, possible devices that you can select, a re relatively low uh, non recurring engineering cost when you build it yourself, and uh, a low maintenance cost of the network, so that um, um, that that you, you don't like in a situation where you need to have battery operated devices you don't have to go in every year or every few months to replace the batteries of the sensors and it, it's a really like simple that's a yeah that's a, a really simple pitch and then if you look at the maturity this is what we pitched five years ago and what's now good news is that we're also now are able to deliver on that pitch so mm -hmm. that's yeah. always in any rf technology yeah. so you see um yeah. So, um, um, so, and I think we are, we're like, what, how, so, so what's my day to day concerns on, on this is that we're, we're going over this hype and then we're still going down. It's still, we didn't hit rock bottom yet, but now is the <laughs> time. So no, honest. Yeah. Oh man. Never. No, no, it's always, no, but, it always but, gets worse. It, yeah, oh. And uh, so, so we have to work on, sorry to finish my, my sentence. So we have to work on, um, um, executing on these very basic business case drivers, like okay, how it's going to be cheaper. How, it's 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 a bit maybe it's a bit more boring than a few years ago, but um, yeah. like we we see that that results in scale. So it's 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 a it's a very interesting phase we're in. Yeah. yeah. Well, you I know, mean, you can argue that this is even more of an exciting period because there's a lot of people who have put a huge stake into Laura and Laura Wan, and now you got to make the stuff work. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, I had a conversation with one of you guys. I forgot, you know, who, but, I, it, you know, actually it was part of my talk, uh, the keynote that I gave. It's it's important for Laura and, uh, well, the Laura Wang community to really figure out its place. And, you know, what you see out there in tech discourse are all these religious wars about the different you know, protocols and technologies for connectivity. The fact of the matter is, uh, like your your deal with, um, uh, 
you know, uh, Deutsche Telekom is a perfect example. It's a recognition that there are going to be heterogeneous networks out there and that, you know, there is 5G is not going to dominate everything. Wi-Fi is not going to die, dominate everything. You know, Laura, Sigfox, they're not going to kill each other off. There's going to be opportunities for everyone to, uh, you know, really address a market segment that their technology is ideal for. Right. Yeah. And um, and then when you look at it from an operator's perspective, they 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 talk they're taking on a changing role as iot continues to evolve and you look at private networks and uh, start to emerge and um you know kind of blend you know and you have all kinds of connect connectivity technologies in in those private private domains so uh, but the important thing is that you know you guys really need to figure out now at this stage uh, where do we fit and how can we um, add value? Because the customer at the end of the day doesn't give a crap about the technology. They just no. need to solve a problem. Yeah, right? yeah. totally. Which is so maybe congratulations. Kind of where, yeah, maybe that's where we are at, yeah, as far as your whole journey, uh, IoT going from hype to the trough of disillusionment. And then hopefully we're slowly pulling out as we've weeded out a lot of people who just did a zillion science experiments and now hopefully what's left is just serious, serious business cases. Yeah. Really economics dominates everything in this, um, especially now, you know, it's not like people have a ton of money to go do no. silly stuff. No, yeah. no and for that, so so I, I think, so, so, just, so just to tap into that, um, is that, uh, so first of all, it's these, these are not commodities. These, these are, the, uh, and, and we start to see them more and try to also educate our customers. These are design processes. Mm -hmm. And mm, it might be a commodity in the future, but, but yeah, like you're comparing, like, like also you have to design it in, like you have to design this connectivity into a lot of, like in your product. Um, and then I see also see that in comparison, comparing these technologies that it feels like they are being compared as commodity, yet they're, they're not, right? They're, it's hard still. Yeah. So it's a lot of hands-on stuff. Yeah. Do you see Laura being used mostly outdoors or indoors, or is it all over the place? Or what do you think? Yeah. So there's a huge amount of diversity, but it's all. I think there's a there's a pattern where um, uh, people control the site, and sometimes the site is a, is a, is a neighborhood with smart meters, and sometimes it's a farm. Sometimes it's a very big farm in Australia where you have like it's just as big as a as a. As a, as a like a, as the Netherlands, for instance, and <laughs> a farm the size um, of the Netherlands. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, no, that's that's uh, that's that's the story. So, um, and uh, and sometimes it's a building, and sometimes it's a stadium, sometimes it's a it's a large ship. So uh, I think that's really the pattern. Um, uh, once you uh, you 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 go into to 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 more like that, things really start to move. Then, then that's really hard. Uh, then, then you don't see that that kind of traction here in this. Uh, but uh, yeah, Semtech just launched the LR1110, which is a it's a it's a it's a it's a geolocation product, which again helps uh, add some some features to it. So maybe yeah, the tracking market will will come as well. Yeah. That's cool. Mark, yeah. you're really quiet there, dude. Yeah, you're talking a lot. Uh, I cannot uh, get into the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, jump in, <laughs> Mark. Talk, talk just, amongst yourselves. No, I, I was just writing down the yeah the hard questions that I don't know if I can ask. <laughs> you or not. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, no, I think, well, first of all, I think the, the conference was amazing. I really enjoy it. I had the feeling that I was in a real conference, actually. I, I oh, wow. had the feeling of that. I really like the tool that you used. And then, yeah, these three, well, these um, scenarios that you use for presenting the talks and so on, I really liked how you play that. I have been in other, yeah, new, conf yeah, new type of conference, online conference, but yeah, I really like how you manage everything and and i really enjoy it we have certainly yeah. done our fair share of virtual conferences over the last year haven't we yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's so you are the over the map. Yeah. again yeah. like this like, we have a great team that does this right like they're, yeah. they're 
it just, I, I enjoyed like like uh, like it just as much as you do, and just uh, yeah, I was very, like very proud of the team. It would be yeah. it would be nice you know to what? have a picture with you on with I all saw. the green walls. Meanwhile, you were present, no talking. That that would be like yeah, a yeah. stage uh, picture. But, no, uh, it, no, we had to. It's very expensive studio, so um, uh, so we only had it for two days, uh, and then we had to, uh, and you uh, use Unreal and uh, Cinema 4D or, uh, or okay. Uh, or uh, Unity to to build the stage. Uh, so while we were recording, we thought, oh, we could do this. Oh, we could do that. So we <laughs> exactly. because <laughs> you, so we were not in it yet. So we were not like we did some tests, and we 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 you need to synchronize it. And um, so yeah, no, definitely like you have like like you can for next edition. So one of the things I, I was discussing with uh, um, with Benjamin Cabe from uh, from Microsoft, he he had a very cool talk where he used Blender as um, as a tool to uh, also uh, a 3D model the digital twin. So I said to him, yeah, next time we're gonna make sure that we stand in there just to create this more fancy effect. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So what kind of ideas do you have more than Mark? Like what what could, like what what's on your wish list for the next version? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I need to yeah, I hey, need to write. Um, this. Yeah. But yeah, let's let's talk into the more complicated things because yeah, I think that yeah, I think we are getting into this maturity, or at least um, people are starting to understand the low power weight area network technologies, and that's really yeah. cool. I mean, yeah. I think that Sigfox is having a hard time right now. That's pretty bad actually for the industry, I guess. Um, but but on the other hand, yeah, I think Laura, it's 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 growing. Oh, hold on, I think I think he's still speaking. <laughs> Sorry, oh, Greg. Greg's talking. There's actually somebody speaking uh, on the clubhouse oh. or what? Yeah, Mark, talk to us, Greg. Get a get an iPhone, man. <laughs> yeah, you can ship me one. <laughs> you have to figure out how to make I can, this. Thing I can send you my address. Uh, by, All right, Greg. Greg. Yeah, yeah, there is because um, one of our talkers here, Mark. Who's, who's uh, you know, uh, not got gaps. an iPhone user. Yeah, we have an air gap. We have an air gap. Yeah. We have an okay. air gap with him. But hey, uh, great. we have to Let figure this out. These are the hard questions, and maybe you can translate that into the, <laughs> yeah, the Clubhouse uh, crew. Um, so one of the complaints I saw from the community. Yeah, actually, yeah, definitely. Thanks for, thanks for volunteering to. Maybe I just put my that's, phone under that's the so weird bizarre, thing man. like this. Does that work? <laughs> I don't know. No, we'll have to figure no. it out. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Sorry, man. Sorry, Greg. Um, you know, that's okay. what, what happens when you buy an Android phone. Yeah, oh. exactly. <laughs> well, look wow. at you, man. You, you. What are you trying to put your Samsung on the market right now, right? To get rid of it. Dude, like, dude. Yeah, no yeah. problem. <laughs> yes, you have to not have an iPhone so you can be in this elite clubhouse, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah exactly. It's, it's super With, inclusive. Clubhouse. Yes, yeah. with Elon Only Musk and everybody years. else, and and Mark Andreessen and everyone else in Silicon Valley. You gotta, yeah. The struggle is yeah, real, folks. Whatever. Yeah. Oh my Should god. I disconnect or that's okay. okay. Yeah, great. Go ahead. Go okay, ahead. Yeah, go, 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 go. No, uh, no. The, so one of the complaints I hear Greg from the community, talking. it's the, um, <laughs> it's this movement to to the things the stack instead of the things network. I don't know what what you what feedback did you get from that. From, from what uh, exactly? Sorry, from what, what, this, uh, from from the things network to the things. Greg was actually talking on oh, Clubhouse. <laughs> this is a yes. It was Mark. It, it was Elon Musk speaking, or Mark yeah, is still yeah, talking. Right. Greg is still talking. I'm going to put Greg on the microphone. Go ahead, talk. Go ahead, Greg. I'm sorry. No, no, that's all right. I'm kind of confused, but you just tell me what to do. Can you uh, hear Greg? Yeah, I can on hear Zoom? Greg. Hey, yeah, Rick, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Go, go for it, Greg. It is. It is. So, all right. I'll, I'll, go ahead. ahead. So, just for context, I used to work with Robin Hitachi on the kind of the periphery. I was on the periphery of, of Rob's uh, great work on Lumada. But I have two questions. So, I'm curious of if there's any opinions on the future of Sigfox in the U.S. Uh, obviously, they're doing reasonably well in Europe. And my second question is on more on the, uh, the Laura side, as far as where we see the future for Amazon Sidewalk. And I've got some opinions about how they stumbled through that, but I also still see lots of potential. So I'll mute myself and just interested in helium, maybe helium as well. Uh, sidewalk. Those, those are some good questions. What do you guys think? 
I, w- I put that on the second yeah, question about question. Helium I, I, as well, maybe for Binka. I don't know if I actually have. Did but I don't know if you hear me. On it. <laughs> Did you hear the question, guys? From yeah. 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 So how do you want to, do you want me to respond? Or yeah, you, the... you, you know better than we do, Wanky. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th- I think uh, Sigfox, there's, 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 there is a place they were, I think they were su- super early and um, a day burned through at least a billion of it in capital, I think, combined with them, uh, the company and, um, and the, the operators. Um, and um, I think, I think specifically what, what they ran into is that they, they were not able to commoditize it enough. Uh, and it was, uh, it, it still is a design process. So Sigfox is a design process. LoRa is a design process. LTM is a design process. And it comes to, there's so much more to it than, uh, than, than having a subscription on a connectivity network. And, um, but I, I am, I am, uh, I have a lot of respect for their model, uh, and, and the vision around, um, um focusing everything they do on uh, business level as a lace instead of technology as a lace and i think i think they, they are example on how you should want to do it but um, yeah it, uh, it, it, it's not that skill with probably what they hoped uh, to be at uh, uh, 10 years ago um so yeah that's my my outside view of that and um i think the, yeah the question around amazon sidewalk um i think, I think it's not publicly known that uh, that using laura and, and uh, we were just addressing the difference between Laura and Laura Wham is that um, uh, if you if you want to tap into the ecosystem and tap into the network effect, Laura Wham is a really good choice, and it also gives you a lot of great features. If you don't need that, then you don't need to use it. So I will always, always be, of course, uh, uh, I'm biased, and I will I will try to explain you used to have to use Laura Wham, but if your ecosystem, or for instance, in the case of of an Amazon Day. They would uh, decide uh, to 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 be closed ecosystem, which also can be a choice. Then uh, then they they, they shouldn't. Um, and um, and in the end, what I feel and what we've learned is that the, the value is not in the network. Um, the value is in the complexity and the problem is in the design process. And the network is 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 extremely easy to build. Um, so I, I also wouldn't see it as any competition for for LoRaWAN. I don't think that if Sidewalk is a success, that LoRaWAN is not a success or uh, or, or whatsoever. So um, I think that's so, a so, yeah. success, right? Mm-hmm. Sorry. S- to have a Sidewalk using LoRaWAN, that's a Semtex success. <laughs> um, Laura. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think every uh, LoRa success is a Semtex success. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and um, um, I'm sure that Amazon tried to to build their own protocol because they didn't have any clue about LoRa yeah, more or anything same. else. So I'm sure that they tried to build something themselves and get um, convinced by Semtech that that existed. No, and, no? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know if, you, if you know the interest uh, story or not. No, no, I don't know. So okay. uh, <laughs> yeah, it's I, I, I just, I just. Just, just. I mean, I'm also a bit more in a hyper focus on just really doing what, what. Like, we're now in a hundred thousand fridges around the world, and why we're not in a hundred million fridges out of the world? That's the challenges that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to to beat. And I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think that, uh, um, yeah, and, and not, I don't think any other IoT success will be a threat to what we do. I think any um, IoT success will be will be beneficial to what we do. So, I think uh, yeah. what do you think about helium. Yeah, and you uh, have, they. Uh, yeah. No, you you have you have um, um, Microsoft as well as uh, AWS um, really working with you guys quite a bit, right? Sure. You know, yeah. um, providing interfaces to LoRaWAN and. Um, integrating into their platform. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember the first time Vinky and I talked was when I was still at Microsoft a thousand years ago. And we were, he was getting started and we were just getting started too. We were literally incubating Azure IoT at the time. Um, We had just made a big shift. We had, our, our IoT platform was, it was like a more of a SaaS platform back then. It was part of the embedded group like all my friends from Windows CE and all those guys built this thing. 
uh, and then we kind of were migrating it to Azure. And so we built these things called event hubs. And then we were throwing some streaming analytics at it and throwing in some machine learning. It was all new and we were kind of wiring stuff together. It wasn't a real product. <laughs> But I remember talking to you a long time ago in those early days, and it we were all so full of hope and excitement. <laughs> this mega trend beginning, you know, of IoT. It was, a, it was certainly exciting times, and obviously, and we've all evolved a lot since then, for sure. Um, I was sitting there thinking about um, Laura, you know, and its its growth. So. You have your. You talked about your focus is developers, which which is great. You know, it's like Steve Ballmer, developers, developers, developers. Yeah, um, which I I totally get you because the developers are the ones doing the work and making this stuff happen. They may be, you know, they're being paid by somebody else who maybe has the vision potentially. I don't know, but uh, to do stuff. But I've always had this belief that uh, developers will follow the path of least resistance. And so when you tell a developer, I need you to build some kind of IoT solution, if it seems too hard or esoteric or weird, they might follow an easier path. Um, and I don't know how hard or not so hard it is for a developer to work with Laura versus, you know, because you got all these developers who've been building smartphone apps, right? And, and they kind of became embedded developers, not really, but <laughs> they think they are a little bit, but they, you know, it, what is the big difference for them? What, do, what does a, a developer have to know when they're yeah. trying to communicate from a device over your network versus an IP based network or any other, you know? Yeah, no, so so um, there's, um, uh, just go one step back. So exactly what you're saying, uh, a developer tends to follow the path of least resistant, but that's not a, a developer's mindset. It's just, if you look at the, ingredients you need to become a successful IoT success, the one of the scarce resources is the uh, is the developer's time. So so there's a there's a general pressure to make that more efficient. Uh, the problem is is that um, um, uh, that uh, uh, um, you end up in a situation where the easiest path is not always the best path. So for instance, Arduino is a great example. It's an awesome platform, great for education. But you also see uh, if you go that path, you going you're you're making a decision which may, might not end up in production. So they're now launching Arduino Pro, so they're also offering that. That's super awesome. So there's a lot of these. Let's say okay, left, right, and then oh, if you go one road, you already know that your your ideas are not going to end up in production. So what we try to do is to make it easy, but not e too easy, and that's like a, a developer experience design uh, thinking that we implement in our systems that 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 is a really hard balance because sometimes you have to learn something the hard way you there is no easy way out you have to understand how certificates work you have to understand how encryption work without tls you have to you have to get this course and 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 um um without going into to, to promotion mode again but that's why we launched the thing certification because then we set the criteria and say, okay, like get into this knowledge level, get these basics right, go through a quiz, get yourself a nice badge, put it on LinkedIn, but at least then go into this level. Because I think exactly what you're saying, you like to make sure that you reduce the developer's time, but also you know that it's best for in people's own interest to learn something the hard way. And that's, I think that's what developer experience design is about. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, uh, Binky, so Mark has a few tough questions for you. Hey, come on, don't give me all the responsibility. Held to kick your butt for some reason, I don't know. <laughs> Hard like questions. Woo, here past. we go. Yeah, I know. Okay, cool. Get ready Let for some brutal stuff, okay? All right, so okay, cool. he says, I want to ask about Helium. What does he think and future collaboration? Um, the good thing is that you are. Oh no, that was what I wrote. To him. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about then, helium? Yeah, what yeah, do you think yeah. about helium? Um, so what they're doing is they're building a, um, a LoRa network where they incentivize people that build uh, gateways, and um, yeah, that that is that is a perfect model to 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 grow or to build a network. Um, what we've seen is that. Um, 
there's not really really a lot of network sharing uh, happening. Um, so we've we've tried to go that path as well, but that was yeah, that was received not not very well. So what you see now, the things network is is mostly it, it is also a, a network where gateways collaborate, but it's way more a playground to to get yourself competent in in IoT and in LoRaWAN and and a lot of like 99.9% of the people probably won't end up in production or will go to LTM yeah. or go to L and in IoT. But it's a, it's a really, a really, I think what we build is something that reduces the cold start. And I think, I, I think uh, we have some, um, in the IoT world, we now have so much data around what works and what doesn't. Like you give like Sigfox with an awesome plan with a, like a very highly talented CEO and you get, they just spent a billion over 10 years, but didn't get it at the point where we all hoped they would have been. Um, and, and that also, one of the things to has to do is that uh, the network itself is only like 2 or 3% uh, that, uh, of the whole solution. So um, yeah, it's, a, and it's an egg chicken problem, right? So you have the network, but then where, where are the business or the solutions, right? And then, and then so, so I, um, yeah, cool. and... Um, uh, and I don't think that um, the economic value you can generate with uh, a uh, antenna in an open spectrum. Yeah, we can we sell gateways for seventy dollars. That is, yeah, that's just just very very um, uh, small. Like uh, uh, and you can put them on anywhere. So right. um, hey, David, I. Greetings. So, so, yeah. so again. So, I, I, um, I think, I think, uh, I, I do not follow, follow that too much in detail, but, um, yeah, that's. I think that's a bit how it, how it compares. But, um, yeah. So, uh, Dave Vasquez just joined us. He's uh, from Verizon. He's one of our regular, or he's one of our talkers. So, welcome, You're David. Talker, You're not David. on Clubhouse, are you? Otherwise, you're going to be stuck in a hole of silence with our buddy Mark over there. You're in the cone of silence. Yeah, you know, I'm going. I think I'm going to be a holdout, even though I do have an iPhone, just because I don't want to read the terms and conditions and then see where my data is going to get shipped. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold out from Clubhouse. <laughs> All right. I, I have no idea what he said, and I did. <laughs> yeah, are, you know what? If I didn't hear you on here. Clubhouse, it means it didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll have to figure this stuff out. This stuff is like, uh, it, you know, it's a struggle. Oh my we'll gosh. Have to figure it out. Um, Leonard, can pre keep reading, yeah. please, the question. <laughs> yes, keep reading. keep reading Mark's questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. The other thing is uh, that's bizarre. These are super nerdy questions. Um, what developers are going, what, no, what developers are going to do with nodes on V2 that are not accessible for them? Are they going to get lost? So, um, well, this is a very detailed question. Um, the um, the gateways are still going to work, and we're going to go into uh, we're, we're 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 in the midst of a migration to give a bit of context. Uh, and uh, um, um, while we're at it, we're going to look at how big the problem is. Um, uh, the, the, I think this really taps into what um, what we just discussed with Rob around uh, sending people down a path of least resistance. Uh, there is a price to pay to that. So in this sense, if you put in a device that you cannot physically access or you cannot per, like virtually access, you have made a decision uh, a while ago, which... Uh, which is gonna, which is gonna be, yeah. Which you set yourself up for failure. So um, I, I'm not saying that that these will be punished by us or that that's so, so to say, but um, 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 yeah, this is this is um, um, yeah, this is this is gonna be a, 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 an ongoing discussion. I think I we're never gonna leave people in the dark. That's what Joan and I said on stage that. Um, uh, for sure, we're not going to do that. But I think ending like somebody that's in a situation who doesn't have physical and virtual access, 
I mean, by law, that won't even be allowed in a few years. So, yeah, it's it's not a good situation that they put themselves in. in it, yeah. Okay, here's another brutal question. Ready? Uh, are these brutal? Or, I don't know. Yeah, nothing but brutal questions from here on out. Uh, how is the thing stack changing? Or how has the thing stack changed? Uh, been received by the things network community um it, so uh, until now i think what we uh, uh it, it's it, the community first of all has been asking for it for very long because we try we, we run it in a commercial setting already for a year uh so we're migrating now to the latest version and that this is also the like more the long term version that we're launching. Uh, and first of all, the open source community has been super happy that we have an open source version now that they can run on their own Raspberry Pi or on their own server. And that has been super positive. And now we're bringing it to the open network as well. So uh, so the the, 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 uh, the 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 excitement of having something new is, of course, super big. Uh, and the, the migration is always is always a bit of a, a, a pain. But I mean, I think we have some early adopters that 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 pushed through this week, and that will generate a lot of user um, content and uh, lessons for us to increase the 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 scripts. So for instance, we started off with command line scripts, also again creating uh, a bit of resistance so that we know that competent people are going in first, and then probably we'll have uh, uh, tools that have UI and uh, that have a web interface or something. So um, it's it's quite a long process. Um, people can do it with very little interruption, and and we're not rushing anybody. Uh, but yeah, the the migration is a, a that's it's always a pain, but it's it's for a very good cause. So that's good. Yeah, no, and I really like the things yeah. stack uh, interface and experience. It's really cool. Good job. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We we work hard on that. Yeah. 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 I have a question. You said. If I'm trying to build a big solution, like out on a farm or wherever, is there, do you guys, is there a marketplace where I can go find all kinds of sensors that are already pre-built with your networking to get a solution up and running? Yeah, so we, uh, actually what we did during our conference, we had a, I'm just seeing if it's, we had a, a LoRaWAN wall of fame. Uh, and um, what we have there is, um, it's also a bit inspired by the, um, uh, the, the the situation we were now in with the, the corona crisis but uh you have uh sensors that we support uh, and uh, with before buying a sample uh, there are payload emulators and data stream emulators so you could actually interact with the device like it's on your desk okay. uh, and we can do That's that really for cool. LoRaWAN devices because for LoRaWAN devices it's it, their behavior is not that different like, that doesn't differentiate a lot, a lot across configurations so um, uh, it, first of all, it saves uh, our companies sending samples uh, to customers. Then, then all nine out of ten percent they end up in a drawer, which is just e-waste. And second of all, it allows you to to build your application with a sensor and your PC without the sensor and the network actually. So uh, it, it's like an uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a, like a device emulator repository. Um, and and the funny thing is, if you build the whole solution. It's literally a switch to the real thing because it's all following the same metadata and device repository. And then we're building uh, interactions with the digital twin uh, device language of, uh, of Microsoft to to grasp in that, and that you get this that this chain just start to understand what device you put on there. And in uh, Microsoft Azure IoT, you can then just like launch a, 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 a an app like that. Cool. All right. Hey, so um, I'm running low on coffee. And yeah. uh, so I think we might, we're thinking of wrapping it up here. Um, it was an interesting experiment. Uh, unfortunately, we. It's kind of a shit show. Experimenting. Kind of a shit alienated show. Alienated Mark and David, which really sucks. I mean, you know, so, the thing is, is Mark, David, you guys will be recording. Thanks, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie kept us stay. Yeah. And yeah, Charlie's Charlie is here. Yeah. Okay. So if, yeah, you know, here's we and, have and two obviously, rock stars, Greg, Charlie, Greg. Thanks for asking your questions. They're really great, and uh, 
you know, hopefully uh, you'll check us out at www.iotcoffeetalk.com. You know, we'll post this uh, episode there, uh, including all of, well, we'll try to strip out all the awkward silence parts and dub in uh, yeah, the questions we're gonna, were needed. Uh, clearly there's yeah. some learnings that happened here today. Learning yeah. number one, don't start the talk until when it's supposed to start at eight. Because if, yeah. if you start it early, it notifies everybody and their dog, oh, hey, it's starting. And then they yeah. immediately jump in the room. And so we had a whole bunch of people at 7.45 in the morning going, Thousands. what's going on? Thousands. So there, there's that it issue. Then obviously we have, you know, our a couple of our colleagues here who, yeah, didn't have iPhones and so didn't have Clubhouse. So they weren't really participating. Or when they talked, <laughs> people in the Clubhouse did not hear them talk. And so that yeah. was kind of a shit show. And then yeah. we had people that we brought on stage at Clubhouse in the app, and they're and they're talking. I'm seeing Greg flashing, or do do do. I'm talking, I'm talking, and none of us heard it because we all have our headphones on. We're trying to not have any feedback, um, but obviously we didn't hear what he was saying because we kind of got these things turned down. And so um, there's certainly things to work out, absolutely, to make this all kind of seamless. Uh, lots of thinking we'll have yeah. to do to figure this out. Well, you out. know, it, it, it's interesting. This is a perfect case of how technology got in the way. Well, it enabled, but it also got in the way, which really If you we were just doing a pure podcast, like you could just record the whole thing on Clubhouse and then upload the audio, uh, you know, to a podcast hoster or whatever. Um, but yes, doing Zoom, YouTube, and Clubhouse at the same time, we, we definitely need to drill in, probably need to look <laughs> on the Google machine and say, how do I make this work right? Yeah, but here, I have an idea because, you know, uh, we, we got about, what, two, three thousand people on on this one, right? No? Yeah, Is two it, or three thousand. Maybe a little thousand. bit shy of that. But, you know, IoT is kind of like a dry topic, right? And I noticed something about Clubhouse. 99.9% uh, .9 of all of the rooms are about how to make a shit ton of money. So what we should do is we should re, we yeah, should rename we our, tons of money with our podcast. Yes, how to make a money. shit ton of money in Binka, IoT. How can we do what tons of think? shit of money with IoT? Binky, because <laughs> he knows no, he's can't. he's coming to us oh, live from on, his guys. giant mansion. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. With all his ultra, you know, his yeah. Bugatti, his Bugatti yeah. out in the front of the driveway. And so he, with his uh, his yeah his fortune in uh, Laura and Laura Wan right no no we don't have a Bugatti we open source our code so they're they're they're, they're mutually exclusive oh yeah. wow so <laughs> sorry folks no money here poverty no. ah. yeah. <laughs> hey, you yeah. know this is all yeah. I gotta don't say you close. play you play your game right you're gonna make dinero man it's like uh, you know there's a game there so, how long does he have to play. But least, that, that's least, not true. I mean, that's a business model, stuff right? It's an uh, open I mean, source think, business that, model. That's like yes. the problem with hype is they sets the expectation that there's going to be this explosion. It's great to get developers engaged, but it's another thing to actually survive through that hump, uh, that hump, uh, the hype hump. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, you're then, right. It, you know, it, if the hype is too amped up, you get on the other side, everything collapses. So, you know, and that's why you have point, to travel light. Huh? Because otherwise you're gonna that's why you have to travel light. So yeah. don't don't get any crazy PCs on board. This would we yeah. did not do that. It's like all this don't, quantum uh, computing crap, you know, people going yeah. just like you know, just completely bonkers with that stuff. Yeah. Hey, real quick, Vanky, what's the difference between the things network and the things industries? Um, so the Things Network is focused on this, uh, what we call zero to one. So uh, helping developers going from, uh, uh, like help uh, cure their cold start, uh, maybe yep. you could say. And the Things Industry has helped and helps enterprises go from a one to a million. So we just see that these are so distinguishable phases where um, it's really easy to solve zero to one with the good tooling, open source, but not with very um, yeah strong or like uh, like very strong commercial models. Uh, and while when you want to scale, you want to outsource liability mostly. Uh, and then uh, then we're there to, 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 to deliver that service. So we manage your gateways, manage your devices, manage your security. And that's where we um, 
and where we come in. And there's also this open source business model. So if the Bugatti comes from somewhere, it's from the things industries, but uh, <laughs> right but with the things industries, you also oh. manage. Yeah. yeah. So um, oh, it looks like people oh, are rolling in. Oh, hey everyone, how's it going? Yeah, we're about to wrap up here, but you can no. uh, watch this episode of IoT David, Coffee make Talk something, please. www.iotcoffeetalk.com. We'll probably <laughs> publish it in the next uh, day or so. You never um, know. But what hey, but guys... I did like I did like the zero to one reference. It's a great book by Peter Thiel. I highly recommend you, everybody reads it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and we'll we'll see if we're going to be back next week. Uh, we'll make an announcement because this this was a little bit of a we might have to ship that didn't we'll quite ship go iPhones right. And we'll figure out some kind of microphone. Yeah, we need to, to. Yeah, how do we pull Clubhouse that's, into yeah, Zoom? So we'll, indeed, uh, yeah. that's a that's a challenge. Yes, we'll yeah. figure because it out. Leonard, I, uh, Leonard, I don't think you hear Mark. I, I like I because you are listening. Mark. He's, he's no, not you, hearing. That's me. what the. No, Leonard is not hearing you. So, oh, wow. So, uh, so <laughs> if you wanted one more. Oh, uh, Greg, yeah. But yeah, it is a, there, I think there's a, this is a great startup idea. Uh, making a, Yeah. Making, uh, there you go. Figure this yeah. shit out, if, somebody. If Clubhouse lasts. Yes. Let's see how long. Well, uh, you know, since space, this space, is, Facebook this is, is truly, collapsing. This is really a marriage. Like, people Jerry are just Springer talking over us. each yeah. other. Yeah. Later, no one has later. any idea. Yeah. Leonard. Absolutely. Yeah. He's got to get cut off, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Greg's yeah, Greg. talking again. Let me put him on the microphone. Oh, my God. All right, here, we're going to do this old school. <laughs> That's hilarious. They just talk shit about me. Greg's talking. Okay. I'm sorry. So I, I, if I could just suggest, um, you know, Leonard, Rob, or whoever, you guys should host a dedicated IoT coffee talk or something else theme it however you want but do that here in clubhouse and just have the conversation in clubhouse on top of whatever you're you know you're doing on youtube or zoom or whatever I, which i don't see or hear but i think that you get a lot of interest and a lot of engagement around this uh, just in clubhouse alone i would just focus on one platform at a time there you go folks <laughs> and you're so awesome that's the best so thing awesome, man. ever sat in the last six Yeah, months. why didn't we think of that? Um, we really actually didn't, and it's so simple. And usually the best solutions are the simple ones. Yeah, you know, um, we didn't think. let's do that. You know what doing this is like, kids? If you're really old, you may remember you have your receiver with a song coming on the radio, and then you have your tape deck, and you push record and play at the same time to record the song. That's kind of what we're doing here. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah i mean it's like old school and the you know, dj is talking a bit over the beginning and the end of the song you're like ah yeah exactly yeah. exactly the same okay. experience yeah yeah uh, great suggestion so um we'll, we'll, good suggestion, we'll have to figure Greg. out how to keep it simple how to right make that happen yeah <laughs> okay guys yeah, um hey everyone thanks for sticking not? around we're gonna uh, mail we'll mark you next time huh yeah we're just mail uh, an iPhone subscribe to mark yeah exactly that's <laughs> You guys are with a lighter, iPhone funny. with lighter. Okay. All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you. Uh, follow us at www.iotcoffeetalk.com, where we try to get some pretty serious conversation going on around all this IoT stuff. So uh, thank you, everyone. And we'll see you thank next you. time. Yeah, thanks. Right? thanks for having hey, me. thanks, thank Vicky. Again for joining thanks. Really appreciate it, man. Bye. Great Bye. having you. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.